The waitress was the only one who helped the starving homeless man. When they found out his true identity, everyone regret not doing the same. Thomas Garcia couldn't be happier after all he felt that he had reached the top of his career. A successful businessman, Thomas had just bought a huge chain of restaurants that he always dreamed of. Yeah, looks like the effort was worth it, said the businessman to himself as he straightened his tie in his wide office. Someone knocked at the door and Thomas let out a, come in, and his secretary, getting inside the CEO's office, said, Mr. Thomas, the helicopter has just landed on the terrace. Thomas, looking at himself in one of the mirrors on that big room, replied, Please tell them I'm on my way up, Camilla. Thanks, Camilla said. Right away, sir. And left the room. Thomas, very vain, finished getting ready and went to the rooftop to get on the helicopter. Arriving at the helicopter, the pilot asked, To where, Mr. Thomas? Greeting the pilot with a handshake, the rich man replied, To one of my new investments, Timmy, the Botanic Dramatin restaurant. Timmy nodded and got ready to depart. Once inside the helicopter, the pilot curiously asked if the boss's new girlfriend would have lunch with him. Thomas confirmed, Nothing better than good company to celebrate new achievements. Rachel will be there. At the Dramatin restaurant, they were having a full day, and the manager was way moodier than usual. He wanted everything to be perfect when the new boss arrived. There couldn't be a fork out of place. Lily, one of the waitresses, discreetly spoke to her co-worker. Lord, give us patience today. If Mr. Eugene is already snappy the way he is, imagine now with the new boss coming. From afar, Eugene observed the ladies' conversation and immediately told them to disperse and focus on their work. Lily and her friend quickly headed in opposite directions and began checking table by table to see if everything met the high standards of the restaurant. And as Eugene had made clear, he wanted the service that day to be impeccable. It didn't take long for the first customers to arrive for lunch. With each one that appeared, Eugene would discreetly ask the head waiter if it was Mr. Thomas, obviously wanting to flatter the new boss. But the head waiter always gave the same answer. Nothing yet, Mr. Eugene. But don't worry, as soon as he shows up, you'll be the first to know. Eugene, forcing a smile to seem kind, just in case any of the customers looked in his direction, said, All right, but look, treat everyone ten times nicer today. I want an impeccable welcome for Mr. Thomas. As soon as Eugene left, a very elegant woman walked in the establishment, and the head waiter welcomed her. Good morning, ma'am. Welcome to Dramatin Restaurant. Do you have a reservation? The woman, very unsympathetic, ironically replied, I don't need one, darling. I'm Rachel, the future wife of the new owner. Is Thomas here yet? The head waiter, surprised, told her that he was still on his way and took Thomas's girlfriend to the best table in the restaurant, the one reserved for the businessman. Eugene, not knowing that the new boss would bring a companion, was startled to see the head waiter take the woman to the main table. As soon as the head waiter left, Eugene quickly approached him, saying, Who is sitting at Mr. Thomas's table? The head waiter explained that she was the future wife of the new boss, and Eugene, relieved, went to the table to start his flattering. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to our restaurant, Miss Rachel. I can assure you that we'll provide an amazing experience. Rachel, presumptuous as always, said with a disapproving look. Well, I can't say that it's been amazing so far. I thought that as soon as I sat down, I would have a waiter at my disposal. After all, I practically own everything here. Eugene swallowed down the criticism but tried to show a smile. My sincere apologies, ma'am. In a few moments, an exclusive waiter or waitress will come to assist you. Excuse me, please. The arrogant woman didn't say a word, while Eugene left in a hurry. He ran into Lily on his way with a bottle of wine. He realized it was one of the best wines they had and said, I don't even want to know who it would be for, but take it immediately to the main table. Lily, you will be in charge of only that table today. Treat that lady and especially the gentleman who will arrive in a few moments the best way you can. Everything has to be impeccable, do you hear me? Impeccable. Eugene pointed to the table and told Lily to go. Lily took a glance from afar at Rachel and immediately realized the trouble she had gotten herself into, but went to the main table to serve the presumptuous woman as ordered. Good morning, ma'am. Here is our best house wine. Rachel once again showed despise. Before the spoiled girl could say a single word, Lily took a deep breath. She knew that whatever came out of the hag's mouth would not be nice, but Lily managed to smile anyway. I didn't order wine. By the way, I didn't ask for anything. 
take that bottle out of here and come back to take my order. Quick! Lily left in a hurry and left the wine in the cellar. On her way back to the main table, she quickly spoke to her co-worker who passed by. I'm screwed. Today will be worse than I thought. I was assigned to serve the new boss and his spoiled future wife. She is already a pain in my ass, and if he's the same... Well, I don't know if I'll be alive at the end of the day. Shortly, Lily was waiting to take the lady's orders. It took too long. Geez, I'm going to have to ask Thomas to make some adjustments to this place, starting with the employees. Lily apologized and with a smile on her face asked what the insolent woman would want while she waited for her husband. Just a Canadian whiskey for now. But stay close in case I need something else. I don't want to have to wait again. Lily faked a smile as she took the order. Of course, ma'am. We'll provide it right now. My apologies again. As she walked away, the waitress thought, Oh God, give me patience, give me patience. Not far from there, Thomas was having a peaceful ride to the restaurant. The helicopter flew over a nearby forest and the pilot announced, We'll be arriving in a few minutes, boss. Thomas smiled and said, That's great, Timmy. Rachel should already be there. Suddenly, the peaceful atmosphere completely changed to a terrifying one. The helicopter had an unexpected breakdown. Thomas yelled, scared, Timmy, for goodness sake, what's going on? Timmy, trying to regain control, replied in a hurry. I don't know, boss. Hold on tight. We'll have to make a forced landing now. All Thomas could do was pray. His special day could end right there. As a matter of fact, his life could end right then and there. So, he closed his eyes, had a flashback of the good memories, and waited for the helicopter to crash into the ground. Fortunately, the impact was not so severe, and Timmy successfully landed the helicopter. The helicopter was badly damaged, and the two men suffered some minor injuries. Their bodies and clothes were dirty because of the smoke. Thomas and Timmy quickly left the helicopter, leaving everything behind, including their cell phones, as the risk of explosion was imminent. Walking away from the aircraft, Timmy, still incredulous with what had just happened, looked at the boss and said, I really don't know what happened, Mr. Thomas. I checked everything before the flight. Thomas, coming closer to the official, said, It's okay, Timmy. The important thing is that we're alive. We're fine. You were a hero. If you hadn't acted quickly, the worst could have happened. Come here, give me a hug. They hugged, and then Timmy asked what they would do. Thomas replied, The restaurant is just a few minutes walk away. An appointment is an appointment. Now more than ever, I want to enjoy my new investment. So, let's go there, take a shower, change our clothes, and have lunch. Today, you are my special guest, Timmy. You will sit next to me and Rachel. Timmy was worried after all. He knew how picky Rachel was, but the boss insisted. The two started walking towards the restaurant. It was a hot, sunny day, making them both sweet a lot. The trail through the forest was not ideal, leaving several scratches on their bodies as they could not dodge all the small branches of the trees. Their clothes, which were already in a terrible state due to the accident, were even worse, with several tears and holes on them. As soon as they stepped out of the woods, Timmy decided to go to a nearby store to buy new clothes while the boss could go to the restaurant first. Thomas was against the idea at first, saying that one of his employees could do it. Timmy insisted. He wanted to make everything easier for his boss, for he had always been kind and generous to him. The businessman then took out his wallet and gave Timmy all his money. All right then, this should be enough. Here, take it. Make sure you don't take too long, you need a bath. In fact, we both need it. Shortly after, Thomas arrived on the Dramatin. He didn't look even remotely the powerful businessman he was. His hair was a complete mess, his clothes all torn, his body quite dirty, in addition to the very noticeable scratches. Despite being very vain and caring too much about his appearance, Thomas was not worried about it at that moment. After all, he just survived a helicopter crash. Now, he was right in front of one of the biggest restaurant chains he had ever purchased. He would take a shower and enjoy one of the best foods in the region. And thinking of food, Thomas was famished. His belly growled like never before. The walk in the woods had certainly taken a lot of energy. Inside the restaurant, Lily continued to serve Rachel, who was increasingly stressed, given her boyfriend's delay. I called over and over again, and he just won't answer. What the hell is Thomas doing? 
He should have been here ages ago. Lily, struggling to maintain her smile, said, If you'll allow me, I can go to reception and see if they have any news from Mr. Thomas. Rachel got up, saying that she would do it herself because she was too stressed to wait for the waitress to go and come back with the message. Lily, following Eugene's orders, followed the ma'am. At the reception, the head waiter alongside Eugene were worried about Thomas's non-appearance. The manager turned his gaze to Rachel walking over and said, Ma'am, I believe you came here to find out about Mr. Thomas, right? We are trying to contact him, but so far nothing. It was at that moment that Thomas entered the restaurant. The head waiter was the first to see the man and immediately widened his eyes, touching Eugene with his elbow and pointing at Thomas. The manager then turned his gaze towards the entrance and couldn't hide the shocked expression on his face, saying, Who let this freak in here? My God, he's going to get dirt all over the Persian rug. Someone needs to get this thing out of here right now. Rachel took a quick look at Thomas, and due to her boyfriend's state, she didn't recognize him, giving him a look of disgust. That's the final drop. Letting a beggar into a restaurant of this class? Oh, I mean it. Thomas is going to have to make a lot of changes here. That is, if he shows up. Lily was also stunned, but not by the man who was entering the restaurant all dirty and in tattered clothes, but by the attitude of Rachel, Eugene, and the head waiter. Thomas came closer, and Eugene walked up to him with the head waiter by his side. Creature, don't you see yourself? Look at this place and look at you. Get out of here now or I'll call the police. Thomas was surprised by the treatment and tried to say who he was, but was interrupted by the head waiter. Aren't you listening? Get out. Get out of here. Go on. Get lost. It was then that Thomas called for Rachel, who even so said, I can't believe this thing is calling my name. Ugh! Did you confuse me? What are you waiting for, you trash? Get that freak out of here! Come on! This is not a charity restaurant. Get him out of here now! Thomas was speechless. Besides his girlfriend not recognizing him and barely looking at him, she also treated him like garbage. He couldn't accept that. Thomas knew that Rachel was not the humblest person in the world, but that behavior was unknown to him until then. The businessman tried to speak once more, however, he was stopped by Lily, who, unable to bear seeing who she thought was a homeless man being mistreated, said, Enough! What kind of human being are you? He must be hungry, just wanting for food. Is that so much to ask? There's so much food here. So much food is going to waste. Don't worry, sir. I'm going to get something for you. Rachel, disapproving Lily's action, said, What do you think you're doing, girl? Who gave you the authority to give our food to this thing? At this time, all the customers had their eyes on the fuss. Lily said again that she was going to feed the hungry man, while Eugene fired her in front of everyone, preventing her from taking any food from the restaurant to give to Thomas. Lily confronted him saying that she didn't need to take anything from the restaurant, as she had a snack in her bag and some coins she would use to buy something for the man to eat. Thomas, on the other hand, couldn't say anything, he just admired Lily's noble attitude, who was sacrificing her own job to help him. It was then that Timmy arrived with the new clothes he bought for his boss. Eugene, before seeing what the man was carrying, panicked. That's not possible. Has this become the convention of the weak and oppressed? Get out! The manager yelled at the completely losing his temper. After Eugene big scene, everyone heard Timmy call the supposed homeless person by name. Here you are, Mr. Thomas. The clean clothes you need. But what the hell is going on here? At that moment, Rachel looked again at the businessman and recognized him, taking the greatest fright. Oh, Thomas, my love, is that you? But what happened? Eugene didn't understand anything, as did the head waiter. While Lily laughed, realizing that the alleged homeless man was actually the millionaire that everyone was expecting, whom Eugene wanted so much to flatter and had offended in so many ways. Oh boy, now things will get interesting. Rachel ran to Thomas, also recognizing Timmy beside her. However, Thomas didn't want to have anything to do with her. Get away from me. You disgust me, Rachel. And you too. Who must be the manager of this place? Well, who was the manager because you are fired? Thomas then told everyone about the accident and why he was in that situation. Eugene and Rachel tried to apologize, but Thomas didn't even want to look at them anymore. Just like Lily, Thomas had a good heart and couldn't stand to see anyone being mistreated. After firing Eugene and the head waiter, Thomas broke up with Rachel, who left crying of anger because she had just lost the best match in town.
Thomas walked over to Lily and spoke for everyone to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pity that your meals were interrupted by this unfortunate event. However, let this misfortune serve as a lesson for us not to judge people by their appearances, and above all, treat everyone the same we would like to be treated. We are all children of God. We are all worthy. I would like to congratulate this young and beautiful woman for her actions today. She was the only one, the only one to defend me, and even put her job at risk. Thomas read Lily's name on her brooch and continued. That's why this young woman with a huge heart will be the new manager of this establishment, if she accepts, of course. We need good people at the top, people with pure hearts like Lily. Lily was thrilled and accepted the new job right away. Thomas made another request to the young woman. Would you like to join me for lunch? Lily happily accepted and everyone applauded. Thomas then went to take a shower, as did Timmy, his pilot. And when he came out, he was completely changed, making Lily blush. The three of them had lunch, and afterwards Lily and Thomas shared many more meals since they started dating, and it wasn't long before they were married. If you liked the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss, and see you in the next story.